créole haïtien. Allez dans le contrôle bas, dans la partie en bas écran, et puis cliquez sur interprétation. Après ça, cliquez sur la langue que vous avez mis en déa. Vous avez accès à la réunion en créole, créole haïtien. Merci. Thank you. Great. Good evening, everyone. Um, I am, I know some people are still signing on. We see the participant numbers jumping up. And so I'm, I'm going to stall for a little bit to let a few more folks in and then um, just say thank you so much for taking the time to be with us this evening for the first of our uh, town halls and public listening sessions about our Boston Police Commissioner search. I'm very, very grateful to so many who have been leading the way in Boston, ensuring that we are building community trust and connecting the conversations in City Hall and BPD headquarters with community organizations, with what's happening um, in our homes, in our schools, and throughout Boston's neighborhoods. So I, I do want to um, first and foremost thank the search committee. Um, Okay, I see more people are coming in. Uh, <clears throat> five members of our community who have agreed to devote significant time and energy and leadership to helping steer this search for a, a very, very consequential decision for our city. Um, it is chaired by Justice Geraldine Hines, whom you will hear from after me. Um, and we are also very grateful to have our chairwoman joined by Bishop uh, William Dickerson, Professor Jasmine Gonzalez Rose, uh, Abregal Forrester, a longtime community leader, and our former commissioner of the Boston Police, Ed Davis. So thank you so much to our distinguished search committee. I want to thank our facilitators for this evening and my uh, trusted advisors and two right hands, I guess, on um, all issues pertaining to community, community engagement and public safety. You heard already from our chief of community engagement, Brianna Malore, um, and we also have the head of our uh, public safety efforts for the city of Boston, Dr. Rufus J. Falk here as well. I wanna acknowledge our um, policy team, our chief, Mike Firestone and um, Deputy Tali Robbins are here and have been so involved in setting this up in addition. And I'm sure I'm missing other um, folks from the city and colleagues in government. So um, apologies for the disrespect. Thank you so much. I know so many hands have been around already shaping this process so that we will be guided by the vision and the feedback and voices in our community. I invite everyone, if you are interested, um, to introduce yourself in the chat if you feel comfortable. I know it's hard in, in Zoom to really feel like we know everyone who's here in the room and we had so hoped to have an in-person um, set of listening sessions around the city, but uh, alas, with the surge, we're starting this way and hope for uh, the chance to do more in-person later on. But um, I appreciate everyone taking the time and uh, we, will, we will have many more opportunities to hear from everyone as well. So what I wanna just, give a little insight into is how we arrived at this point in terms of shaping the search and what's going to drive this decision. Um, everyone keeps asking me, you know, is there someone already chosen and there's just kind of a process to, uh, you know, go through some steps. No, there are, uh, there's not any candidates for police commissioner being interviewed in at right now or even um, spoken with or identified because it was very important for me and for our team and for our search committee to really have a first phase of this process completely dedicated to ensuring that we were even looking for the right person to have community feedback shape the parameters around values, experience, qualifications, and other um, characteristics that we need our next police commissioner for the city of Boston to have in this moment. And so for several weeks, our um, committee will be having larger sessions as well as smaller group conversations and, and individual stakeholder conversations to hear directly from so many who are invested in Boston public safety and shaping uh, a, a pathway for 
building community trust through that in the future through public safety and public health. Um, oh, of course, I see Jamal introducing himself in the in the chat. I forgot to say thank you so much to our Boston Police Reform Task Force, whose recommendations have already moved the conversation and action steps in Boston around public safety and police reform so much in the last year. And we look forward to continue staying in partnership and building on those recommendations and, and that your expertise as well. Um, I think the only other point I wanna make is that um, we are in an urgent moment. We're reminded every day just how much the systems that we have known and been building often aren't working for everyone. And those are systems that the pandemic has deepened as we continue to see the strain on our communities, just about every which way, housing and health and uh, the impacts on mental health and therefore the impacts on community safety and healing. We know that this is a moment for bold action and bold leadership. And so that is guiding every part of our administration uh, but we can't get it right. We can't know what the right bold steps are unless we are listening to and following the footsteps of community members already on, um, on the solutions. So thank you again. Um, I will stop talking now because the point is to listen. And my job now is to pass it over to our chairwoman, uh, Justice Geraldine Hines. Hey, thank you very much. And I hope everybody won't mind. I wanna take the liberty of just speaking for a few minutes, two or three minutes to give you some introduction to me, my history and how I think uh, this process is going to go. Uh, let me begin by thanking Mayor Wu for this opportunity to work alongside the distinguished uh, members of this committee in the search for the next commissioner of the Boston Police Department. This is an undertaking of great consequence for the city and for the people of Boston. And I commend Mayor Wu for her leadership in pressing for a transformation in policing that this post George Floyd moment demands. The selection of a new police commissioner who is likewise committed to transformational change is an important first step toward that goal. Our task as members of the search committee is to provide Mayor Wu with a top-notch slate of candidates, each of whom is qualified and willing to take on the challenges that will come in reimagining policing in Boston in a way that centers fairness and justice and advances a rational and fair public safety agenda for all Bostonians. We will labor with every bit of energy we can muster to accomplish this task. The path to transformational change that Mayor Wu seeks is long and arduous. And we should all be clear that although it is important, the selection of a new police commissioner will not transform all that is wrong with policing here in the city of Boston. That is a problem that must be addressed by people through vigorous advocacy and political accountability. This is a part of that process to be sure, but our task is to seek out candidates who are committed to tackling the issues that fuel the clamor for a new model of policing. While this process will help to identify policies and practices that are essential to this new model of policing. My hope is that we will find candidates who will commit to begin the work of addressing the urgent issues that have come to the fore most recently in the public debate over policing in our city. I speak for myself only when I say that those issues are the lack of accountability for police misconduct, the lack of transparency in addressing misconduct issues, discrimination within the ranks, corruption, and a culture that abets misconduct are necessary starting points for the next commissioner. Tonight's meeting is the beginning of a process that will prioritize input 
from members of the public and from stakeholders. We all owe Mayor Wu a debt of gratitude for her willingness to reject a business as usual approach and open this selection process to meaningful participation by the people of the city of Boston. We seek your views on the questions that will inform our work in selecting the candidates to be recommended to Mayor Wu. As we begin, we foresee some questions likely to dominate our discussions. Number one, what are the essential qualities and skills that the next commissioner must bring to the table? And number two, what are the essential aspects of a reform agenda for policing in the city of Boston that the next police commissioner should adopt as an essential component of his or her strategy for change? Of course, we know that based on your own experience, you will have other ideas that we should consider. We look forward to your comments, which we pledge to carry into our deliberations. Each member of this committee brings a unique perspective. You will now have the opportunity to hear from the members who wish to speak at this time. And I should note that one member is unable to be with us tonight. Uh, Abigail Forrester could not be here. Uh, he is ill. So we will now begin with the other members who wish to speak at this time. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Ed Davis. Um, I run a security consulting firm uh, here in Boston. Um, prior to that, prior to founding that firm in 2013, I, uh, I was the Boston Police Commissioner. I uh, concluded a 34-year uh, uh, career in law enforcement um, with uh, a seven-year uh, stint as the Police Commissioner here in the city. And uh, I am thrilled uh, to be part of this great committee. I've had a chance to meet everyone, some I've worked with over the years, some I, I've newly met, uh, but I believe this is a committed group. Uh, I share Justice Hines' comments, especially about fairness and justice. And uh, I think um, I, I would just like to thank Mayor Wu for having uh, faith in us uh, to be able to uh, um, present uh, to her people who we believe uh, may be um, uh, change agents uh, for positive uh, effects uh, in policing and part of positive connections with the community. I know that when I was a commissioner, I always went to the neighborhoods to, to decide difficult questions. So it's a thrill for me to be here and to, to hear your comments tonight. Thank you. Good evening, I wanna thank um... Mayor Wu and um, appreciate Justice Hines and other board members, but more importantly, those who are uh, joined us, who have joined us to listen in. Um, my name is William Dickerson. I'm Bishop Dickerson from Greater Love Tabernacle. I'm the senior pastor there. Um, I, I'm a former uh, Boston Police chaplain, a former reentry consultant for the Department of Corrections, and a former member of the transitional team for uh, uh, Governor Patrick and also the late mayor. Thomas Menino, and I focused on, on uh, public safety and uh, community engagement. But I, I just uh, want to say that uh, I'm, I'm elated to know that the um, audacity that uh, Mayor Wu has in allowing uh, such a, a, a committee to come together, one. Secondly, to allow these listening sessions uh, to, to take place and to be able to bounce things off of each other so that we could come to a, a good conclusion in regards to the prerequisites that are needed for the next commissioner for, Bo for Boston, next police commissioner for Boston. So I believe the next commissioner should be a bridge builder and an innovative thinker and um, know how to deal with uh, various ethnic groups throughout our community and understand the challenges that we've had within the black community in particular over the years and to try to um, uh, um, foster some, some sense of um, normalcy in regards to uh, 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 trust and transparency. And so reform is urgently needed. And I believe that uh, social justice and equity is something that has, those are things that have to go forth um, in the mindset of the next uh, commissioner. And we have to do all we can to work together. So thank you so very much 
uh, Mayor Wu, and thank you for your staff and everyone that's on the call tonight. And I hope that we all can come to a great conclusion as it relates to the next police commissioner. Good evening, my name is Jasmine Gonzalez Rose and I'm a professor of law at Boston University and also the deputy director of research and policy at the BU Center for Anti-Racist Research. I just wanna say how honored I am to be here with Mayor Wu, with Justice Hines, and particularly with everyone that I see signing in on the chat, um, representatives of different neighborhoods, leaders, activists, um, just uh, in concerned citizens. And I'm excited to be here tonight and to really listen and to learn from you. Thank you so much to our amazing um, search committee um, for providing um, this, the like providing the opportunity for this to happen. Um, like many people um, on this call feel and experience, this is this is a moment to um, make a decision that is informed by community and have community at the core of it. So I'm excited that this listening session is happening. So now I'm going to set the stage basically for the, the feedback process. Um, this is, again, the first one of our listening sessions, and we really genuinely want to hear from the community on what are the qualities and values that this next Boston Police Commissioner need to have to be successful um, to be, and to be supported by community. Um, just a reminder, this is a recorded conversation. We do have ASL. Um, Haitian Creole and Spanish interpretation. Um, everyone also there for everyone's knowledge, there potentially is press in the room. So I want to let everyone know that as well. Um, and also want to let everyone know that there everyone is muted. Um, and we heavily encourage people to use the um, chat function for comments and questions. And also that everyone uh, will have a two minute um, max on speaking. So at this moment, oh, and also to remind everyone, we did start a little late, but this whole, pro this, the length of this meeting will be about an hour, but we will respect the, the time that we, um, that we were late and joined on to. So at this moment, I want to let everyone know if you all, if you speak um, either Haitian Creole or Spanish um, solely, I want to give you guys the opportunity to um, raise your hand and then the interpreters will um, interpret your question back into English in this main room. So I wanted to check if that's happening in here. If not, we can go just into regular hand raising. Let me give it a second. Okay. So as of now, if you have a comment that you would like to share or anything that we should be aware of or wanna share with the search committee and the staff um, and the mayor to inform this decision, um, you can raise, use your raise your hand function and we will basically stack from there. Okay. So the first person I see is Paul Joseph. So I'll, I'll unmute you, but I'm gonna set the timer. I'm serious about timekeeping. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So um, the first, I want to just get the elephant out the room uh, first and foremost. Um, number one, uh, you got Ed Davis, uh, former commissioner, and Ma'am Leo, you know, 10 years ago gave him a uh, vote of no confidence because we didn't feel as though um, he was doing enough with respect to the, to, for diversity. I have, I have a tremendous amount of respect for uh, Mr. Davis um, and you know, his, his dedication for law enforcement and his commitment to the job that he's done in the Boston Police Department you know, for his service and everything else like that. But it did happen and I just want him to sort of comment on that. Um, in terms of what's happened in the last 10 years. So um, that would, you know, make him sort of more qualified to be able to deal with these issues of transformational policing. 
So I don't have an issue with um, you know some of the positive things that he did about truthfulness um, in terms of transparency and stuff like that. But I felt as though he had many opportunities for diversity, and um, you know I didn't have an issue with his community policing. Um, but you know, officer wellness was important too. So, you know, I just kind of want him to speak on that a little bit in terms of what's he going to bring to the table in terms of on the committee. And um, I do think that, you know, at the end of the day, right now I'm, I'm a sergeant detective. I've been on 32 years. I'm a past mem. I'm a past president of Manlio, and so we've been fighting. Like I told Mayor Wu when she was running as a as a candidate. We've been at this for 30 plus years. I've been there on it for 32 years. And we've been fighting for this diversity and inclusion and accountability. And we felt as though we got let down so many times. You know, we fought for the discriminatory drug test that we have to go to federal court to win in state court. We fought, we fought for Hi, Paul. a Sorry. better promotional Paul. exam. Uh, we fought for a better promotional exam that uh, we had to win in federal court that was recently as, as, as just Paul, um, thank you. you. Paul, you've hit your two minutes, but we, we got the, the gist of, do you want to wrap up really quickly and then I could chime in? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, you know, we fought in for the, uh, you know, for the promotional aspect in federal court. We won that too. I mean, the department gave us no help. They fought us tooth and nail, tooth and nail, tooth and nail, and they continue to fight tooth and nail. We have no leadership. I'm an internal affairs. We're overworked in terms of um, not enough hours, not enough uh, workers. And so we, we know- Sorry, Paul. Always Th sorry, I, just needed a, I needed That's a one it. second wrap up, yes. So I wanted to chime in here. This is a conversation to frame the qualities and qualifications we want to see in our next police commissioner. This is not a conversation to have personal attacks on or uh, personal questions for any of the search committee members. Um, I just wanna reiterate that piece. Uh, but I really appreciate you, Paul, for sharing your concerns. Um, again, this is recorded and I'm taking notes of all of these conversations. Um, just to guide the conversation a little bit better, um, to frame it a little bit more, I can pose a couple of questions so it can keep us on track. Um, so what do you think that the community desperately needs from your next police commissioner? Um, question two. Uh, what issues related to public safety is a priority for you and your neighborhood? Um, and how can BPD potential leadership um, support, the, support those things? Um, and also, what do you think the role of and responsibility of the police commissioner is? So I, wanna, I want everyone to like kind of think of those questions. Which one do you prefer to answer? Um, and I definitely want to make sure we're staying on topic of um, shaping the agenda for this next police commissioner. Thank you. Joanne? All right, good evening, everyone. I apologize and thank you, Brianna. Um, I, I just wanna start off with saying thank you for hosting this meeting. I'm glad we can get everyone's opinions. Um, I would really like for you know the next police commissioner to have another to um, sit back at the desk and interact inside uh, with the community. And another thing is um, I would like to make sure that they re-implement the DARE and GREAT program. Uh, the GREAT program is gang resistance, education, and training. And then the DARE program uh, is drug abuse resistance education. I believe two of these two things are crucial um, in making sure that the youth and families, as we grow up, um, you know, we maintain that good relationship with our Boston Police Department. Um, I, I definitely just want to highlight that dear program, great program, and make sure that they are a community service officer. Um, I, I definitely uh, see Nora Basin's name floating around. Definitely want to find out to be uh, someone who does amazing work. So um, thank you all for your support. Thank you, Juwan. I think, I believe, I don't know if Ed Davis wanted to chime in here or. Uh, thank you, Brianna. Uh, it, it's, um, it's, it's, 
it's a good opportunity uh, to uh, to address some of the things that uh, that Paul has said and that uh, have popped up in in the chat here. Um, I I, um, I was uh, the police commissioner for seven years. Uh, there were a lot of institutional problems that prevented us uh, from implementing uh, programs that Mayor Menino and I. Uh, believed would be uh, very effective in in reducing uh, the amount of um, in inequity uh, that was uh, present in the police department, uh, not only in the promotional process, but also in the uh, uh, in the discipline process uh, that occurred. Um, and so uh, I appreciate the kind things uh, that Paul has mentioned in, in his uh, discussion. Um, it was a, it was a, a long seven years where we implemented uh, a lot of uh, very positive uh, um, engagements with the community. Uh, Dan Linsky and I were working very closely together. Dan um, did, did a lot of work in the community, as did I. We were at community meetings with the mayor uh, almost every night. But the bottom line is this. Since they, I've left the position as police commissioner, uh, I've worked around the country. I worked in Chicago. I, I worked in New York uh, for the Justice Department. Um, I've, I've been uh, privy to some of the most um, important changes uh, that have occurred in policing. And um, after what happened uh, this past year, um, I have a, a real uh, desire to, um, to do the right thing uh, for uh, the community and to make sure, as I always have, uh, that the community be heard and the community get the type of policing that they uh, that they uh, demand at this point in time. So um, police commission is a tough job. You can't please all the people all the time. Uh, but we went uh, and, and did what we thought uh, was the right thing working within the constraints that we have at that time. So thank you for the opportunity to bring that up. Thank you so much. Um, just and thank you for again community um, chiming in on this. Um, just to reiterate um, the three questions, uh, and I will also drop them in the chat. Uh, what do you and your community want to see in the next police commissioner? What are the issues related to public safety um, that is a priority for your neighborhood and community? And how can BPD leadership help support that? And what do you think the roles and responsibilities of the police commissioner are? So I will share that in the chat, but also unmute George. It says ask to unmute. Did you? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank you for hearing my views. And for the mayor, I would like to wish her very well and wish and say a lot of prayers for her. She's going to need it. She's got a tough job. And for the police commissioner, he's going to need a lot of support because there's been a lot of transition and a lot of things going on in the Boston Police Department. I'm a former Boston police officer. I have a lot of pride for my sisters and brothers that serve in uniform. And you brought up an interesting thing. And I think Mayor Wu was approaching this in an excellent idea of going outside the department. Sometimes we have the best of intentions in law enforcement, but we get bogged down because it's the same rudder trying to steer the same ship and you seem to be going into a circle. When Ed Davis came in, might not have been liked, who cares? But it was a different change. When Bill Bratton came in, he was former, he was outside, he came in, he had effective change till he went to New York. My question or um, recommendation for the next police commissioner would be to be fair in his judgment. The Boston Police Department had a monumental problem with disparity and disciplinary actions. If a, if a black police officer did the same activity and action as a white officer, the severity of the discipline was ridiculous. They would stop. Um, sorry, George, it, auto it automatically cuts off at two minutes. Yes. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, or yes. whether the- 20 more officers, seconds. Right, or whether the officers get terminated and resign. So subsequently what happens is that the balance of, you started out with let's say 20% black, by the time they're getting terminated or suspended, does not, they're not replacing those officers. They're being replaced with white officers. That's why the ratio gets disproportionate. 
And if there's fairness above judgment as discipline, there also needs to be fairness when it comes to exams. When exams come around, it splits that department. The department should be, the police academy should be giving free information and free testing for the officers to advance. We want a better police department. I want the best because Boston has the best officers and they are so super. And again, I commend this mayor and I'm a, I'm a veteran and I'm a vaccinated veteran and I'm appalled that those people are out there protesting at her house and I feel so bad for her. It's Thank wrong and Thank I'm done. Thank you, George. Thank you for sharing those sentiments. Um, the next person in line is Marie. I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. Brianna, am I unmuted? Yes, I can hear you. Hi, good evening. Nice to see you. Nice to see so many friends on this call and so many people I've had the honor of working with over the years. Um, I appreciate your questions and I know there's a lot of JP folks on the call. So um, I just wanna zoom in a little on an issue. Um, I love the men and boys in our city, but I also have uh, a lot of um, experience about the issue of the needs of women and girls. And I really want to put that front and center in terms of looking for a police commissioner, man or woman, who really has a commitment to the issues of gender equity and also really looking at the intersectionality of gender violence across both the department and the community in terms of um, those issues and taking opportunities to really look at how we could make systemic change to change the, cl the climate of violence, not just on the streets or in some of the traditional ways, but really looking at the impact of gender violence, domestic violence, sexual assault, human trafficking, you know, right down to bullying in the schoolyard. All of that leads to a culture that quietly condones various levels of gender violence and our police commissioner needs to be a key participant in helping us change that cycle of violence in our community. So I really wanna um, put that front and center. There's great work being done. There's been wonderful leadership, the Family Justice Center models that we've launched and I've um, had the honor of working on many of them with Commissioner Davis and people on this call. But there's opportunity for real cultural shift and I think this is the moment to take it. And I hope that that will be part of the um, questioning of a commissioner to really look at their experience in that um, area. And um, that's not to say that our men and boys don't need help too, but our women and girls are often um, not front and center in the conversation. And, I, and that leads to some of these dynamics that we're trying to change on a day-to-day -day basis. And just finally yeah. to yeah. give, a big plug out to the um, beat officers and the walking officers and the community police. Um, I'm an E13 and our community officers are just an amazing part of the strength of the work we're doing in Eggleston and across the yeah. E13 area. So again, I know you're gonna cut yes. me off. And so I'm gonna be <laughs> in the respectful. nicest way possible. I know. Just want everyone in space to talk. But you know me, Brianna, yeah, I know. this is like short. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, and Thank I wish you so everyone much. this team great success in this choice. Thank you so much. So, yes, just a reminder for everyone, the way to raise your hand is going to your reaction function um, in the bottom of your screen. It should be the bottom right um, of your Zoom screen, and you'll be able to raise your hand from there. But next um, is Frank. I can unmute. And my phone will signal that, that it's two minutes, too. Hi, Frank. can you hear me? Yes. Thank you so much. Hi, uh, this is Frank Ventura. I'm the president of the Boston chapter of the Bay State Council of the Blind. Although our organization is specifically for blind persons, my comments are about all disabled persons. Quite often we hear about police departments having dialogues with many marginalized uh, populations such as homeless people and persons of color. And those are excellent and necessary, but rarely do we hear about them having conversations with uh, the community of disabled persons. And quite often this is, uh, has led to very, uh, a lot of very bad experiences with interactions between police and disabled persons. So I would just like to stress that the commissioner, uh, the coming commissioner really 
would benefit and our community benefit from dialogues between the police department and the disabled population in regards to a three-pronged approach. The first is to develop sensible policies and procedures between interactions of police and disabled persons. The second is to make sure that these are followed and with proper training. And the third is finally to have effective discipline in cases where training is ignored. So once again, I, you know, I applaud all efforts to have dialogues with uh, diverse populations. And I certainly hope that the disabled population is one of those uh, groups that are able to take advantage of these dialogues in the future. And I greatly thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you so much. Thank you, Frank. Um, and the next person I see on my screen is Kenya. And um, also just to let people know that we have interpreters. So if you could speak as slowly as possible, that'd be great. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so first things first, um, as a Mattapan resident, <clears throat> lifelong Boston um, resident, uh, the first thing I want to know, say is that our community service offices are great. Um, what I am hoping to happen with the new commissioner is that they would you know, see the value in CSOs in our communities and somehow, um, you know, add more CSOs, especially, you know, uh, CSOs of color, police officers of color in these communities of color, uh, because I know even with our CSOs in B3, we love them. They're great. They're resourceful. They always are in our meetings and they talk about everything under the sun. Like they're just really, really good. And we value them a hundred percent on this end of, of, of the, of the Boston area. Second thing is, um, uh, I also hope the commissioner takes a really a real aggressive approach around gun violence in our city. And lastly, as VP for the Caribbean American Carnival Association, I also hope that this commissioner, um, you know, is open to working um, with you know very fairly large groups and providing resources as such to the events that are integral and important to the Black community. And my last thing is, um, there's a lot of good notes in the chat. And I would I would recommend the the uh, search committee to save that chat if they know how to, and that's my last thing. Thank you. Definitely, um, thank you for that flag. There are great some great comments in there, and we will be saving and recording this meeting in the chat. So the next person I see is James Gildan. Good, good evening. Uh, I, my name is James Gilden. I am the attorney or one of the attorneys for Mamlio, and I've been involved for more than 50 years. It's great to see Justice Hines, who uh, knows the streets as well as the law and uh, couldn't be a better person to be a co-chairman of this, or this uh, group. Ed Davis did some good things. And one of the things he recognized, and I believe he testified before city council is Boston police, the nepotism and favoritism were alive and well in the Boston Police Department. And unfortunately, that's still true. And we certainly need a leader in the, as a Boston police commissioner who is strong and independent, they're not subject to those kinds of pressures uh, to do his job as he, his or her job, certainly uh, as, as appropriate rather than what the politicians want done. We, I think we need a leader who is committed to the social justice and committed to working aggressively uh, in conjunction, hopefully in conjunction with other groups like Mamlio to recruit minority candidates. Um, and the department needs to be involved with the community as much as possible. Uh, I know our prior commissioner certainly was uh, very active in the community and was beloved by the community. Um, we, our organization, 
commends. Oops, just just one thing. <laughs> Thank you, James, for your comments. Just uh, just one. Yes. Okay. Uh, the post commission and the new civilian review board is going to to certainly help in the area of police accountability and uh, transparency and working with the post commission working with the training that's going to be established and is in being and is already being established uh is going to have a very positive effect on policing all over massachusetts but certainly in boston thank you james for your comment um i want to pass it over to antoinette i can actually unmute myself Can you, oh, I see you unmuted now. Yep. Uh, good after, uh, Good evening. Uh, I'm looking uh, for the new commissioner who uh, to have an understanding of um, the many uh, social issues that are affecting uh, our communities, uh, particularly um, as it interfaces with the criminal justice system. Uh, particularly, but not exclusively, uh, mental health issues, uh, and to commit to training his or her officers on mental health uh, law and how to uh, better handle uh, these difficult cases as they intersect uh, in the area of criminal justice, uh, homelessness, et cetera. Thank you. Wow, short and sweet, concise. <laughs> um, Daryl. Uh, hello. Hey. Hi. Um, I just just to get to everything. Um, I just want a, a police commissioner that has a track record of ensuring the people, which is not really that many people, but um. All in all honesty, um, just holding accountability to the, the bad cops who were in those offices is it, um, who's doing all this um, trauma ties into our communities. And um, also somebody we could, uh, as a community, we, we never felt comfortable with policing. So somebody could possibly we can um, communicate with on that level. Thank you, appreciate your comments and your insight. Um, Gwendolyn is next. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a retired police officer two years in February. Uh, I have to tell you, I watched for almost 32 years uh, officers get fast tracked or groomed, what I would say, in positions, whereas there were other officers who were just as qualified or more qualified for such position. So, therefore, what I think the department should do is have a serious, uh, an established mentoring program. Let's not just put people in positions because they know the person or they were in the same gang unit or the same drug unit or the same class. There are very qualified people who are not getting positions that they should have gotten. I mean, I was a sergeant when I retired, but I had to do what my mother said I had to do. I had to work twice as hard to get where I got. And it wasn't easy. No one made my path easy. That's a serious problem. Thank you. Thank you, Gwendolyn. I also wanna take a second um, to acknowledge um, the electeds that are in the room. I believe I've seen Councillor uh, Ricardo Arroyo, um, Councillor Tanya Fernandez Anderson, and Councillor, sorry, Councillor um, Lucy Luigian. Um, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but I'll do a quick glance. Um, if anybody wants to speak, you can raise your hand at this time. The raise your hand function is in the reaction bar at the bottom right of your screen. I see State Representative Russell Holmes as well. Thank you all for joining in your partnership um, in this work. I see a physical hand and I think somebody's probably had <laughs> Willie, Dr. Willie, I'll unmute you. Well, am I unmuted now? Yes. 
All right, thank you. And thank you for the opportunity to speak. I think this is a very good forum and uh, kudos to, to the people who put this together. I just have a very brief comment. I think it's important for the next commissioner to really work hard to, ref um, to make sure that the police department reflects this community that it serves throughout the police department, not just at the patrol level, which where it's the patrol level really is the level that where the rubber meets the road, by the way. You know, that's where those are the and those are the representatives uh, of, the city, of the city government. And those individuals really shape the opinions of citizens about that police department. So it's important that, um, that that representation, that diversity is there. But also at the sergeant, lieutenant, captain levels, that mid-level management level, because that's where the policies are structured. That's where the policies are rolled out. The captain, the district commander, plays a, a significant role in the quality of policing in that particular district. And also at the command staff level, it should be reflective. So that's my first hit. My second hit is that I think it's absolutely important that I'm glad to hear Jim talk about this. As some way, the uh, an idea, the notion of uh, uh, civilian review boards are in place in the city of Boston. I think that is critical because you got to think about this. Boston so, says that it's one of the oldest police departments, if not the oldest in the country. Well, there's a, a academically, uh, there's some debate over that. New York claims to be that, so as Mass uh, Philadelphia, but that's another conversation. But we need to make sure that the community, especially the community of color, is comfortable with the disciplinary action that are taken against officers who have operated outside of the scope of their training. So I think it's important that the community review board be a part of that process because it can actually report back to the community that this is a fair and objective and uh, equitable position on that particular officer's behavior. That's all I have. Thank you very much. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Willie, for your um, insight. Um, I seen Zeba. I said she was next. <laughs> And she disappeared from, oh, there you go. <laughs> hi, sorry about that. No um, hi, I'm Zeba Cranmer. Um, my day job is at Boston University. I run a, a, a data science um, center and my, my night job is JP Progressive. So I'm wearing two hats. Um, I would really encourage the committee when you're um, reviewing candidates to ask about the candidates experience, perspective and commitment to transparency and to releasing and collecting data. I think we, um, I've experienced doing a lot of projects uh, for external partners and internally about, you know, whether it's police accountability or patterns of um, activity in different neighborhoods. There's a lot of information that a lot of answers around running the police department that could be um, better dealt with if we had better data. So we're moving out of these sort of um, anecdotes and into real transparency and accountability. So that's one, one um, point. Um, and then I think similarly, it's really important in this new era of policing and surveillance that the, that the candidates have an understanding of technology, of the impact on um, communities from a surveillance perspective and, and understands um, the implications of that. Um, so I think those are really important things for uh, this individual to have a perspective on, a point of view, and a commitment, um, and hopefully a historical track record of how they would behave with regards to those different pieces. And I'd also say just a real understanding of, of privacy protection. I mean, you can collect data and still protect pri privacy. If they don't understand these things, they're not going to be able to manage it. They're not going to be able to um, you know, have, they're not going to be as open to releasing information data to hold systems accountable and change some of the structural factors that are playing out every day. So thank you for the opportunity to give input. Well, thank you so much, Ziba, and for everything you do. Um, I just wanted to remind everyone, we're not ignoring the chat, we are saving the chat function. Um, and this meeting is also being recorded. Um, right now, I do want to just signal that we are approaching the, the closing time. And I definitely wanna give space for the search committee to say final words and maybe the mayor to say final words, but I'm willing to take one or two more um, raise hands if you, if anybody wants to speak. Oh, 
I'm sorry, I do not want to pronounce your name wrong. Is it Jorge or? I unmuted you. Diaz? Uh, it's actually George. George, okay, sorry. Uh -huh. I'm so um, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I see a lot of familiar names on this. And I, I, again, I want to thank the board for what they're doing and obviously the mayor for considering it. I think there's obviously a couple of things that really come to mind. One, um, you know, I'm a very strong advocate for keeping um, the selection in-house. I think we have some outstanding candidates. Um, somebody mentioned uh, women of color. I think there's a very strong candidate that I, I wrote earlier in Nora Bastion, I think who's fantastic. But I also think that the person who should be the next commissioner should have uh, partnerships, right? Because we still have an issue that we have to deal with outside of the department. And that's um, sadly the uh, black on black crime with these young men killing of each other, right? So I think people who have partnerships with say like the buildings trades would offer really good qualified jobs when they get out of, you know, incarceration if they're locked up. Um, colleges, right? Working with the colleges who have a, a tremendous amount of money to give to these communities to help build, you know, some hope in these communities. Large corporations. Um, we do a lot of work with a, a lot of the sports teams, like the Patriots and the Celtics. There's a, a ton of money right now currently that the, that the Celtics have to, to kind of distribute out to these communities. So I think the next commission would be somebody who has these kind of partnerships and can bring hope to these young men, right? These young men of color, right? Because I think that you know, somebody once told me that they kids who lack hope, you know, they 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 take unnecessary risk, right? And that's what we're seeing sadly in these communities. But I think that the person who is the next com commissioner doesn't have to be the perfect candidate. I think sometimes we go out looking for somebody who has FBI school. We have this. We have this. We have this. We have master's degrees. We have this and this, and they have no street knowledge, right? They have no understanding of how those communities work. What we need is somebody who's perfect at policing people, right? Who, who's perfect at understanding the problems of the people in these neighborhoods, right? So we're not necessarily looking for the perfect candidate based on a resume, but the perfect person who understands that we have to show love, compassion, and understanding when we're dealing with people out here who are currently coming off of three years of COVID, but have a history of being neglected. So that's uh, my take. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, George. Um, we're going to have our last person, Jonathan Cohen, speak. Um, but I did want to flag for everyone that if you did not have an opportunity to speak tonight, we do have surveys available um, for you to submit comments to the search committee as, um, and it's also available in multiple languages as well. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat now so everyone can be able to access that. Um, Jonathan. Awesome, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all, all of the committee members for being present and Brianna for doing a great job moderating. A few quick, uh, name is Jonathan Cohn. I'm a resident of the East Fenway Symphony area. Just wanted to quickly um, speak to one, the, the need for somebody who approaches issues from a de-escalation perspective, especially when it comes to kind of the role of, kind of law enforcement in large scale events. One thing that we've seen, especially with the, kind of the number of protests uh, after kind of the George Floyd murder is the oftentimes when police take a very antagonistic and and kind of like escalation, like escal escalatory or whatever the exact word is, approach to protests that uh, that kind of leaves nothing better off in the end. Uh, and so wanting somebody who does approach things from like a, a perspective of de-escalation first to make sure that that everybody is able to leave some leave an event leave an event safe, uh, and rather than causing causing undue harm to the kind of the protesters there expressing kind of. In kind of using their First Amendment rights. Um, also, would be great to see a police commissioner who's kind of willing to be a partner in pushing for things, let's say protections for the immigrant community at the state level, as well as somebody who's kind of a supporter of, as opposed to an opponent of, police reform efforts, like the recent law passed kind of last year, or any follow-up steps through there, because it's an especially powerful voice if you have a police commissioner who's willing to kind of speak for the importance of those kind of on the, kind of on the state level as well as on the city level. But yeah, and, and thank you again. Thank you so much, um, Jonathan. And again, thank you to everyone that joined tonight. Thank you for your commitment and dedication to supporting this decision. And it's so crucial. And I, I want to underscore where this conversation is starting. Um, it's starting in community and it's staying in community. My screen is. Can anybody hear me? 
my screen is a little frozen. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, um, this process is starting and staying in community. Um, and I just am continuously uh, grateful to be in community and hear um, firsthand um, how we should be shaping this conversation and shaping the, the this, this very important decision. Um, so right now I'm gonna hand it over to our chair to wrap us up. I can't, and then have the mayor say some final words. Okay, uh, the, the only thing I wanna say is uh, just a tremendous thank you for the 200 people who signed on uh, to this meeting tonight. And I'm, I'm delighted uh, for this participation because it certainly broadened my understanding of the issues that people care about uh, as we think about who the next police commissioner should be. Uh, the issue of disability rights uh, that had not been on my radar before uh, the gentleman who spoke about that uh, spoke about that. And I think that uh, I really appreciate hearing from him because I think we do need to uh, expand our thinking about the kinds of issues that, that people want uh, to bring to bear to this discussion. And I'm also appreciative of the diversity of experiences and backgrounds. I don't need to name names, but I know that one of the, the commenters is a former judge of the district court who has a lot of experience uh, with these issues. Uh, I appreciate hearing from the young man. I don't recall his name right now. Uh, but who expressed his concern about uh, how police officers interact with young people. That's, that's a really big problem that I think uh, we have to bring to the center of our thinking about who this next person should be. And I appreciate the insight from the academy. Uh, I know from my own experience that uh, data collection is very, very important in helping us understand problems and in helping us figure out solutions uh, to problems. So this has been um, uh, extremely helpful uh, to the committee and uh, I appreciate everybody who has taken the time to uh, help educate us and enlighten us on all of these issues. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I don't know if uh, the mayor is can pin her. I'll just add a quick thank you to everyone for being here. Um, thank you so much, Chief Malor, who did an incredible job moderating and keeping us on time. I've been on the receiving end of her uh, move alongs <laughs> often as well. And um, thank you so much to our committee. I just I'm I'm so hopeful and excited uh, after even just listening to all of your comments tonight. They were. You all were thoughtful and it was such a wide ranging set of insights and truly grounded in exactly the type of detail that we need to be shaping this. And so um, I wanted just to mention a couple next step kind of things. One is that our next listening session again on Zoom is going to be uh, Wednesday, January 26th at noon. So we wanted to do one evening, one day time and then see what the uh, appetite is for, for more after that. So please help spread the word. It's similarly going to be a registration link. We also have the three questions that Brianna had mentioned in the beginning and that were in the chat, along with a few others in a uh, Google form survey. So that could be shared widely. If you wanted to add more, you know, one of the additional questions on the survey is to add a little more about your any personal experience you'd like the search committee to know about that might relate to how we should think about public safety and, and uh, the police department in, in our city. So We'll share that link. Um, hope to see more folks uh, and, and spread the word on the 26th. And um, just wanna make sure that we are continuing to hear from uh, individual groups as well. So if you have ideas of particular groups that the search committee should hear from, maybe not in a completely public setting, but um, you know, we, we will be reaching out to all of the police unions, to Mamleo, to Jago, to ask for uh, some facilitation of more private sessions so the search committee can directly get that honest and direct feedback as well. Um, and so 
stay on a second so we can make sure you get the survey link and contact email for following up in the chat. And uh, most of all, thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Thank you so much. Again, the survey link is, it lives on this uh, webpage and it's available in multiple languages as well. So let everyone know. Thanks everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.